give me a brief overview of your technical skills sure sure so like i'm working as a data analyst like i was working initially as a data analyst now as a data engineer and uh, it's right. been now uh, four plus years to be uh, specifically for this particular profile uh, my skill set are more into the uh, developing the sql queries like, for the uh, backend and uh, extracting that queries to the front end to develop the tableau dashboard that, that is a primary role of mine okay uh, further i had involved into developing the workflows uh, into the altrix tool as an atl so that uh, mm -hmm. on the uh, particular interval of time like uh, weekly daily and uh, monthly basis i can extract the re relevant reports for the stakeholders and the business users uh, that is the second task i do so on day-to-day -day basis uh, most of the my time is spent into the uh, understanding the business requirement of the client and uh, what features they want to add up into the tableau dashboard and based on that features like i identify like which fields are needed to be extract from the backend server like if any need any changes need to do into the existing sql query or custom query or when it comes to the altrix workflow like uh, to do any modification in existing workflow or to use any micros so that business user can get uh, the the data set or the report that they are looking for okay okay uh so as you know for any data engineer right there are two skills which are uh, really key to the success of the in their role one is sql the mm -hmm. other one is python yeah so if you have to rate yourself in both these technologies what would be your rating uh in sql i can rate myself uh, eight like out of ten uh, right. because i most of my time on my workplace i spend on writing sql queries and pretty confident in that uh okay. when it comes to python i to be honest like i have done some machine learning and data science related course in python but i mm -hmm. still don't have the practical exposure like how to build up etl through python so i am working on that part like uh, i have signed up for the big data course and i am currently on the high part so scala and pyspark okay. is upcoming so soon i will be cover that and once i can once i cover that i will try to implement a mini project so that i can at least get some hands on and in python okay 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 then uh, let's get started on some sql scenarios mm -hmm. then we can go over to other things okay so in sql uh, so you have primarily worked as a tableau dev and you have also maintained uh, data sets right in the backend right. right okay so primarily where do you use sql do you do any uh, data loads or is it just for uh, analyzing the data or to validate your data sets where do you use sql uh actually we have the data warehouse like we are using oracle db Mm -hmm. and uh, stakeholder have their own tables loaded into the oracle db so based okay. on the requirement i just identify which are the relevant tables like i first identify the which fields they are looking for to be present into dashboard and where that's that fields are present in which tables so based on that i identify the er relationship between the different tables and i write the view a view in the sense like first i write the query and mm -hmm. uh, do uh, perform the multiple joints uh, apply the case statement if they have any conditions in flags so i implement that and uh, based on that particular query i write a view like i implement the view in oracle db so that i can use that view to extract that particular data set to the tableau server and further i use that extract to develop the front-end dashboard okay uh, 
do you have any exposure to etl technologies in the past uh i have used altrix as an etl mm -hmm. tool uh where the things are same but the business users are not very much into the technical of sql so okay they are using altrix to make a quick changes into the report and uh, further they consider altrix to use to extract data from multiple data sources and gets the final report in csv form because they want a small data set as a final output so they are utilizing mm -hmm. altrix to perform some etl tasks okay so do you have any exposure to data warehousing concepts uh practically i theoretically i know but practically i have not uh, involved in the data warehousing like i work with db team but uh, like the concept like olap and uh, there are different concept present in data warehousing so that one i don't have have you ever heard of the term etl yeah. like we just spoke about it right etl yeah. and elt do you know difference between both of these uh etl is like uh, extract transform and load uh it, elt could be the same like extract load and transform but i have not searched about ET, elt like i will quickly make a note okay so in these um, things right etl mm -hmm. or elt there are different concepts like uh, delta loads incremental mm -hmm. loads and full loads that are usually performed to manipulate data and to load data from uh, different sources into your target data warehouse or ODS stores. So, uh, have you ever done something similar? Have you ever implemented yeah. uh, incremental data yeah. load? Yeah. So, in the Tableau Extract, I am doing the incremental load like on every mm -hmm. month. Uh, the thing right. is, like, uh, we are using some historical data mm -hmm. to develop the front end dashboard, but for every month, uh, the stakeholder look for the last month's data also. So based right. on the last month date, like the where the extract was refreshed on particular date. So considering that date as a latest record, I use the incremental load, like based on that date, whichever records comes after that particular date, Tableau will only load those data. Okay. I, yeah. I understand incremental yeah. refresh concept yeah. in Tableau, but incremental load uh, works slightly different because in Tableau, let's say you can do incremental refresh, which will only capture the new data which is available in that particular Correct. view table, whatever it is, right? But Tableau does not handle uh, historic updates. So if there is any updates which happened in older data, even though it has a new timestamp, it will make a duplication of that in its own data set so Correct. it won't go and change the historic value right so in that case we go with the full refresh right. if any major change in historical data the, these things are usually handled on the data engineering side that's what mm -hmm. we call the incremental load yeah. that's what i was uh, asking you got you okay that's okay. Um, so let's go with some scenarios in SQL. Mm -hmm. uh, let's say I have a data table with a few duplicates. Okay. They are all true duplicates. What I want to do is I want to clean up this table. I want to remove these duplicates, but I have to at least retain one copy of the duplicate in the table. Okay. So how can we clean these up? Uh, there are multiple ways. Uh, one of way I I can use the Windows function. Mm -hmm. uh, and uh, in the dense rank i will use dense rank so if any duplicate record capture so right. it will apply the same number to that particular record and uh, mm -hmm. at the end we will capture if count of the particular dense rank is uh, greater than two or uh, greater than one will be deleted in delete condition we can put th this condition and which okay. whichever record having the count more than two it will delete it and only one record will be present okay so what does dense rank usually do uh dense rank is like uh it it will apply the numbers to the record mm. 
like from mm. one two three but based on right. the uh actual value let's say if okay, let, mm. yeah. uh, let's, let's say there is a sales table right yeah so let's say employee mm -hmm. uh, salary something at the sample table okay yeah yeah so what happens if two employees have same salary what will be their dense ranks uh the dense rank will be same number for the both employees and whichever okay. employee having a less or greater salary it will not skip the number it will apply the second upcoming number to very next record okay. so when i told you data table has duplicates that's what i said they are true mm -hmm. duplicates they it's not like a id is same but the value is different it's a true duplicate the whole record is a duplicate so when you apply dense rank on top of that you will get same rank you will get one yeah. one 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 how many ever there are you will always get ones yeah. so using dense rank you cannot separate uh, actual data with duplicated data okay so based on primary key we, we can apply it there is no primary key right okay. if primary key is there then there will be no duplicates no no i mean if any do yeah 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 i got your point got it any other approach you can think of uh basically if the salaries are same so but mm -hmm. employees are different so it will not consider as a duplicate record right now here in this case uh, the data table i told you the employee mm -hmm. name is also same the whole record is same okay It's basically you have duplicate records with same values in all columns. There's no difference at all. Okay, so one more approach we can do is like we can uh, put another condition on employee name and the salary. Mm -hmm. If both are same, it will give mm -hmm. a count of two, like, and we can further delete it. But which function will we use here? Is it still dense rank or something different? Uh, dense rank will be applicable on the uh, integer, and we can use count. Uh, we can. I I need to check like. <laughs> okay, that's one. fine. Yeah. We can move on. Uh, let's take another example, right? Have you ever uh, used the materialized view concept? uh no okay that's fine um let's say i have a data table the same table mm -hmm. i want to back up this table but i don't want the data inside the table i just want the structure of the table okay okay yeah we can use the insert command like mm -hmm. uh, insert into table and in further bracket we can select star from the target table that we want to copy and right. we can put a uh, one where condition where we can put any false condition like one equal to zero so but insert will not work if you don't have the table right you first need to create the table right yeah yeah first we will we will have to create the table and then we will insert the another table into that particular table and put the false well, condition you you already have an original table let's say it's called table a Okay. Yeah, I want you to create table B without any data, but same structure as table A. Correct. So we have table A, and we don't have table mm -hmm. B. We will first create table B, like create table B, and further mm -hmm. we will do insert into table B from select star from table A, where uh, any false condition like one equal to zero. But we don't need any data, right? Insert is only yeah, used to exactly. insert data. Exactly. So here, uh, it will that command will run, but as condition is false, it will not load the data from table A to table B. It will only. But to where I am confused is what is the reason for running this insert? Anyways, we are not loading data. Correct. Uh, while creating the table, you are creating the structure. I need just the structure, right? I don't need anything else. Correct. So, what will be your create? 
I'll only will you write all I'll... the column names? What is no, there no, no, no. I will not. I will not write. Uh, is it fine if I type that command in chat box so it will be more easy? Yeah, yeah. Please, please. Ah. Uh... Let's move on then. Okay. okay. So in SQL, you have constraints, right? You have yeah. primary keys, foreign keys. Yeah. In the same way, you do have indexes. Yeah, yeah. So what does indexes usually do and how do they help a table? Uh, indexer, indexes basically help us to uh, optimize the uh, runtime or optimize mm -hmm. the query. And we can apply the index on, on I think, I believe by primary because I have not uh, used index too much in my day to day work. But uh, we can apply it to a column where we are retrieving the data from the table. And okay. Yeah. Okay. Uh, I'm not going to ask any Python questions because you have told me that you're still learning. We yeah. can go to other things like uh, have you ever used any cloud technologies, AWS, Azure, GCP, anything? I have used GCP, but uh, didn't get enough time to work on it. Like, it was okay. a pilot project, but uh, after so after a week, they changed my project again. So okay, okay. And uh, have you used uh, Linux operating system before? Yeah, uh, currently using the uh, in, I'm practicing the Hadoop stuff in Cloudera VM. I believe it is uh, Linux. Uh, some commands that I am familiar with, like uh, okay. show the list or ls. Got it. Got it. Okay. 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 I'm good with whatever I've asked you. Do you have anything that you would like to ask me? Yeah, actually, I wanted to uh, know the. I can feel that this is a very potential opportunity as a data engineer. So mm -hmm. what, uh, like for me, it is like a, a great opportunity because I can see right. the uh, potential of great learning and uh, exposure on different technology like Python and on cloud technology. So considering that, like uh, what are the other expectations from this particular position? Uh, so this particular position is a typical data engineer role. Uh, like I said, uh, mm -hmm. the mandatory skills are SQL, Python, and Spark. So that's where you learn. But additionally, you'll have a, a experience on a cloud technology, most probably AWS, because gotcha. the data stack will be built in AWS. And uh, yeah, got you. Anything else you'd like to know? Um, no, I'm good for now. Like I'll, I'll definitely work on cloud technology, build up my skills, and we'll wait for feedback on it. Okay, yeah. great, Akshay. Thanks a lot. Thanks for Thanks. your time. Thank you, Anil. Have a good day.